on down to Vegan Town. <laughs> see you tomorrow, okay? We'll see you. See you all. Sorry, guys. Real quick, if you haven't met our friends from Reesers, they were right over there. They were right shirts and series. Was on. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, in, in terms of the judges, uh, I have Whitney, uh, Vic, Emily, uh, Blair, Dylan, and your name. Yeah. Uh, Jeff. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And then of course Joyce. So that's uh, our seven judges today. Uh, over here on, on the left is Mike McLeod, president of uh, the World Food Championships in fact. So Mike's vision is what uh, I guess started a number of years ago and what we are all currently living right now and what I certainly live on a very day-to-day -day basis and, and the rest of us here on our team. Randall uh, is our contest coordinator. He's been helping all the competitors. Michael is a photographer, and that's basically a general introduction of everyone that's going on here. So um, they're about to turn in here in a few minutes. The first group had about two hours. So they had one hour and five minutes, and at that point a 10 minute window opens and they have until the end of that period of time before they have to turn in. What you will do is sit down here at the table. We have seven judges, and so we can fit you all into this table. You'll have uh, placemats, and you'll have scorecards. Your table captain and Randall will help talk you through this. So as I breeze through this right now, don't feel like you have to know everything about it as it's going along. It's pretty laid back. We're still here. Fun is always going to be the overriding serious, but fun. We're having a good time. We're judging potato salad. Um, first thing that will come through is a tray that has a display portion. You are judging it on appearance. One to 10 on appearance. Does that look good? 10 being the best, perfect. One being the worst. Uh, look at it. Basically, you're just going to say on your appearance score as it goes in front of you, does that look tasty? Do I want to eat that? Uh, if that were in front of me and I uh, had an option between that and something else, would I choose that? It doesn't look good. It's in your eyes. Very simple. Appearance. Go ahead and as those are coming in front of you, score them. On the tray, there will be a number. So you will write uh, in the first box as that one goes in front of you, if it's number 101, you will write 101 there, and then you'll put, for the appearance score, anything between 1 and 10. Super simple, guys, right? All right, so that one will go off. The next one will come in front, same deal, appearance. Appearance, 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 appearance. Um, so then at that point, after the appearance is scored, then we'll go through and we'll take pull out tasty portions. So then 101 is going to come back around in front of you. You'll write 101 in this little box here on your tray, and then you'll take 101, which is probably in a little saucer or ramekin, something like that, and you put it on that spot. And at that point, uh, as they come across, you'll be able to taste and try it. Uh, you'll be scoring it now on taste, which is what goes in your mouth. Does it taste good? Does it taste, in your opinion, the way it's supposed to? Um, do you want to try it more? Taste is, again, it, uh, there is no way to be truly objective about it, so we embrace it. You have personal preferences. We don't try to hide them. We try to accentuate them. What I want to encourage for you, though, if you have an ingredient preference or something like that, try to set that aside and assess it based upon their ability to execute what they have done. Which brings me to an additional point of execution, which is a little bit different. So I was talking about taste there. Execution simply is, and that's the E in eat, did whatever you think in your assessment they were trying to do, were they successful at accomplishing it? Did they get it done? Did it come together? Is it on the plate and did it work? 
at that point, that's your execution, one to 10. Uh, five is average. I, quite honestly, these people have already won to qualify to get here. I wouldn't be surprised if anything is five or under. They've already won. They, and so that says to me, they're probably gonna live something in that world above. I'm not telling you to put them there. That's just me trying to help give you an idea of kind of where they would potentially go. Do your absolute best to not score them against each other. Rate them on their own individual merits for all the categories. I know it's difficult. Do your absolute best to not rank them against the other one. Score them as if they are their own. Just because the one you had before was an eight, and this one seems like it might be a little bit better, you're gonna try to throw that out. And if it's an eight to you at the time where you have it, it's still an eight. So that's all it is. Uh, those will all come across. The first group has eight. eight in it. So we'll do eight for the first group. Quite honestly, you're gonna try 15 different potato salads. You really don't want to eat the entire portion even though they're only giving you four to five ounces worth of Pace yourself, that's all I can yeah, say. It, it'll be a lot of portions at the end of the day, or the, a lot of ounces at the end of the day. Two or three bites is really all you need to get there. And, and that's really all the words that Keep in mind, if there's one you really like, they will be moved over here at a grazing area. So if you do want to taste it after or something you like, you'll get to try it again. Yeah, exactly. So the display portions will come off here, and then Michael will come in and make them all look beautiful at the target. Um, so that's execution, that's appearance, and that's taste. That's really all that there is to it. If you guys have questions, we have Randall, we have table captains, we have me. Everyone is here to help you guys. The judging process is not intended to trip you up. <laughs> we're not trying to, oh, hey, we busted you on that one. You were paying attention to Jeff. Ha ha. Now, if you have a problem, you have a question, we're happy to help. So um, we'll go ahead and uh, I'll let you guys go unless you have any questions. Yes. Yes. With each other during judging. You Good can one. talk all you want once we're done. You can compare stuff, but don't don't go, oh, God, that is too much terracotta in there. Or don't, don't try to influence any other judges. Try to keep facial expressions to a minimum. If it's awful, just try to deal with it, but don't influence everybody else at the table. We want to give them a fair chance to get as fair and, and impartial judging as we can. Stone Cold poker your faces all across. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I've, I've touched base with most of you on this. But Hello, I'm Arlie Bragg. Today we're going to have the World Food Competition and the bacon category. In the bacon category, we have 34 teams competing for the World Bacon Championship. They'll have two turn-ins today. One will be their signature dish, and the others will be a structured dish, and they will be using right brand bacon. Method of judging. The eat method is execution, appearance, and taste. So they'll be judging from one as inedible to 10 as imperfect and we'll have 34 judges that will be judging the 34 teams. Tell us what you're making. This right here is going to be, uh, well, what I'm making right here is our, uh, put in a crab souffle, crab and bacon. The, uh, it's going to have crab, onions, garlic, shallots, green peppers, anything else we can throw in there that the judges might like. Yeah. What's the other dish that you're going to make? We're making s'mores bacon. We're going to take a marshmallow, a piece of bacon, cook the bacon. We're going to rub candied yams on the inside of the bacon, wrap it around the marshmallow, dip it in chocolate, put a chocolate swizzle stick right on the top. If they don't, if they don't like that, they don't like bacon. No, I'm not. I'm shooting. what it's all about right here, the bacon. And bring it at home. Can you talk about what you're going to make? I'm making a bacon coffee burger topped off with a whiskey bacon onion jam, then topped off with a Louisiana bacon remoulade, all under a phyllo dough, then top of bacon curls on top of that. And you took all the calories out of it. Yes, sir. Zero calories, all the taste. What? I think skin on pears. Yes, skin on pears. Can you talk about what you're cooking? Uh, so today we're making a bacon, fruited bacon donut with a whiskey whipped cream. From scratch? Yes, sir. The bit of a donut, kind of funnel cake texture. 
and then we keep the fruit in there and we make the whipped cream and we infuse our whiskey with vanilla so we use a vanilla whiskey. <laughs> Brought that from home. A little bit of Texas whiskey for us. Is this homemade whiskey? No, not homemade whiskey. <laughs> We're not moonshiners. But uh, Texas whiskey from uh, High Texas. That's actually the whiskey with the vanilla bean. Vanilla bean and mountain. We got that going for a month, right? Yeah. We get it from Garrison Brothers Distillery down in High Texas. It's delicious. Very small production, so. And number one was a cheesy bacon macaroni casserole. Entry number two was a apple bacon dessert, which was very tasty. Uh, number three. I had one, <clears throat> one that was sort of a uh, taco. I found it absolutely excellent. I loved the aftertaste of it. It's just really fantastic, wonderful appearance. In general, all of these, their appearance and their taste and the execution are all really top notch because these are excellent, excellent teams competing today. Of the, five, uh, of the four entries we have here, I believe that the little um, cups were very interesting and that the bacon was put into the dough outside instead of um, featured around, but it's inside the dough itself. Very interesting. Oh. 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 Hi, my name is Nichelle. Um, I really enjoyed it. My favorite was probably the taco and a nice spicy and a lot of flavors to it. Um, I also really like the creativity of the, the bacon bowl with the grits and the shrimp. It was really good. Hi. Uh, I really like the taco. It was really good. I thought it was really interesting and a really nice spin on uh, bacon. And I also like the shrimp and grits bowl with the bacon as a bowl. The presentation was amazing, so I thought it was really good. I obviously love the taco on this one. <laughs> the spice was really nice. The presentation, the execution was just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, the bacon bowl, again, the weaved basket-like, it was very, extremely creative. And the peanut butter and jelly type tarts, um, did not quite understand that one, but eh, it was different. That's all. <laughs> There it is. 
this? What is that roughage? Actually looking at these uh, various ribs, uh, it was my opinion that we had some very excellent ribs today. <coughs> the, uh, in fact, the first four uh, I thought were exceptional. Uh, the, f the fifth one, uh, in my opinion, was, was too dry and, uh, and received a, probably a, a score, at least from me, uh, that was uh, equated to the dryness within the uh, barbecue. The, the sauce was, was great. Uh, in the other four, the uh, uh, the rub that had been used on them was good. It wasn't too hot, and uh, and the and the meat was moist. Now, which one did you like? <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree. I think the first four were excellent. I mean, there were such small differences between them. The rub was perfect, the sauce was perfect, tenderness, it, it was really hard. Obviously, I liked one even more than the others. And then the last one, unfortunately, had a nice taste, but it was dry. One bite and the whole thing came off of my mouth. So, it's the way it goes. Uh, I felt the same way. The first four were really moist and your perfect rib. Absolutely, I agree. First four were outstanding. All the teams said they did a great job. All the ribs were moist, succulent, and tender, uh, especially the first four, like everyone else said. I will definitely have to agree with that. Um, every one of them were really good. They were so close together. Uh, it was very difficult to distinguish. Thank you, Alberta. Have a favorite? I did. I don't know if I'm allowed to say it on the air, though. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> All of those. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we had uh, we had some really really uh, impressive uh, subjects today, and uh, I think number four was my favorite. We had some some excellent uh, pork today. Uh, it's really tough choice. Uh, I, I'm not sure which one I'd choose as a favorite. They're all just excellent. I agree with Judge number two. Number four was very good. Also, I liked number five, but I did notice there was a lack of smoke flavor on most of the entries, and several of them were extra tender, actually too tender. Uh, as, as a judge, we have to come up with those kind of decisions, and that was my decision. I have to agree with Richard that uh, some of the uh, entries uh, were lacking a little bit of smoke. However, all of them were tasty. I think that uh, there might have been one or two that were a little bit overcooked and a little bit too tender, but all in all, I think that uh, the effort that the competitors put out was uh, exceptional. We had some uh, excellent pork. If I had to select one, I would say number five was the best one of all. Good. Uh, I would say the first entry it had a real good beefy flavor, uh, which to me it tasted pretty good. Um, the tenderness was pretty good, except for the last two, who were pretty tough and uh, lacking on flavor okay. on the fifth one. Do you have a favorite? Uh, probably the beefy flavored one would okay. be my favorite. All right. Same as him, one and two, pretty good. And four and five were really tough. Okay. One and two were good. Number three had a good texture. Uh, four and five were both tough. And this was just a great big thing of fat. Hey, judges, before you leave, this, I thought it had a great flavor, maybe a little on the salty side. This had a wonderful beefy flavor over here. This one, when I'm eating with my eyes, looked great in the box, but um, overall flavor wasn't as beefy as I was looking for. It didn't really scream brisket, and it was tough, and, and this one was very tough. So uh, overall, I think I pretty much liked one of these best. And, I was a little disappointed with the ones that had the burn ends because I always expect a lot from those and was a little let down on those. So, 
Yeah, the first one was <clears throat> pretty good. Texture was not too bad. Had a good beef flavor. The third one you could see is gone, so that was the best. That was the best one on the on the plate. The burn end over here could have been in probably for another 40 minutes. It was a little uh, tight, and the last one was just a little bit tough. <clears throat> um, I if thought the first. Everybody would help kind of clean up their table. It'll be a lot easier on the table, Captain. We make them stay till 10 tonight. I thought the first three were really good. This one obviously was my favorite. I'm going to eat this bite after I'm done discussing with you. The last two were, uh, uh, this one had very little flavor and was way underdone. And this one was even more underdone and it had very little flavor. All in all, one, two, and three were my favorites and I'm going to have this bite now that you're done filming. Jesus. Who's your daddy? You tried the rest, now try the best. Who's your daddy? I am. I don't understand why they put the clothes in the box in there. See, that's the only discount in there. I get chili, but chili right here. World class chili right here. I like that, huh? Who's your daddy? We've done good. this a couple times. Yes, there you go. Thank you. Don't forget to go. Come on, try chip chili, but chili and bay guy, right here. This will be it. This will be your yeah, chili. Yeah, you don't need that because I've got these there. Rob, I just spilled my chili. Yeah, I know. There's beans in there. There's beans in there, Rob. Don't sell out. <laughs>